Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you are audible. Yes, yes. Yeah, am I audible to you? Yes, yes. Right, right, right. Uh, so, we start the second session of today, uh, FDP, Atal FDP, on 3D printing and design. Uh, in this second session, I would like to invite Dr. Ravi Kumar, sir. And it's my privilege to be introduced, Dr. Ravi, sir. <laughs> Dr. Vairavi Kumar, sir, is Associate Professor in Mechanical Engineering Department at National Institute of Technology, Warangal. He obtained B.Tech degree in Mechanical Engineering from JNPU, Kanada. In 2000, and in Computer Integrated Manufacturing from PSG College of Technology, Coimbatore, in 2002. He has done PhD in Mechanical Engineering from Osmania University, Hyderabad, in 2011, and postdoctoral research in 3D printing and at Milkeview School of Engineering, USA, in 2012. He has supervised more than 30 MTech projects and produced four PhDs and guiding four more PhD thesis. He has published more than 60 research papers in national and international conferences and journals. He has filed one international patent also and two patent Indian patents. The area of 3D printing. He is instrumental in setting up rapid prototyping laboratory at NIT Barangal. He started MTech program in additive manufacturing in collaboration with Central Manufacturing Technology Institute, CMTI, CMTI Bangalore, first time in India of its kind. He has established a world-class metal 3D printing facility at NIT Warangal under TechTube 3 grant. He has conducted more than 15 training programs across India and trained around 900 participants in the area of 3D printing. He received the Young Engineer of the Year 2009 award from the Government of Andhra Pradesh and the Institute of Engineers India. He has executed sponsored R&D projects worth 1.2 crores rupees in the area of 3D printing. He is the life member of ISPI and RPSI societies. He visited countries like Australia, Sweden, Singapore, Finland, France and USA. So with these words, I would like to invite Dr. Vairavi, sir, uh, to start the session, sir. Over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, very good afternoon, one and all. So let me thank uh, first uh, uh, Dr. Mayank for uh, giving uh, the introduction of me. So thank you, Mayank. Uh, yeah, let me share my screen. Uh, very good afternoon, one and all. Um, yeah, I'm trying to share my screen. Yeah, I think it should come at by this time. Yeah, are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes sir. and my yeah, right, right. So my audio is also uh, clear, right? Yeah, yeah, clear, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. So, yeah, uh, a very good afternoon, one and all. Um, probably you might have exposed to a previous uh, speakers uh, um, topics like um, say 3d printing materials and um, uh, some design aspects and then um, a demo on um, maybe some polymer machine if i am correct uh, and then one keynote lecture maybe uh, from um, dr cp paul sir so um, yeah so we i, I think uh, with that background so let me um, uh, so talk uh, uh, during this session and then followed by there is a demo on the uh, metal 3D printer, uh, um, which is there at NIT Warangal. Uh, yeah, so then uh, let me uh, begin this uh, session with um, the title uh, 3D printing of uh, metals, composites and ceramics. So, uh, uh, yeah, this is going to be uh, my outline of my presentation, starting with uh, some introduction part, though 
yeah i know this is a second day um yeah i can uh, give you some bit of introduction though it may be pertaining to uh, the uh, general or in particular to the um uh, my topic and then of course materials i think a previous uh, speaker might have covered it uh, but uh, let me uh, have some glance of the materials that can be uh, and then um you may wonder why uh, this fellow kept all the seven um 3d printing systems here uh, if you are asking to present uh, metal ceramic and um, composites so, so you may you may wonder why i am going to talk all these seven why because uh, there is no um uh, line drawing say that only um through vat photopolymerization system only epoxy resins can be made or through material jetting um, uh, again only epoxy or through binding binder jetting only sand or uh, kind of material that can be printable and extrusion based normally it is a polymer but now uh, why i am saying all this is um, my intention is to uh, give you the recent uh, um material additions or the capabilities of um, all these seven uh, uh, 3d printing processes uh, um which has uh, classified by the astm f42 committee um so why because uh, um all these seven if you fit this material so called uh, ceramic so called metal so called composite so almost almost all the technologies um, are qualified you may you may you may be wonder why i am saying this um but previous um, scenario was totally different but the current scenario is uh, different now you can you, you cannot uh, draw a line saying that these are meant for only polymers these are meant for only metals these are meant for only ceramics or composites no no so that's that's my intention let me uh give you the um the recent uh, advancements or the kind of stuff in pertaining why because my title is goes to material ceramics and uh, composites so i will i will try to stick to that only but uh, but it may overlap here and there uh, why because um, maybe polymer is is also the um previous uh, material the first generation 3d printers were only the polymer uh, based uh, printing technology like vat photopolymerization system or the laminated object or um, even powder bed also it was started with only polymers then the metals metals are added then further metal matrix composites and further ceramics um, is added uh, under that also but um, say um, that that is my intention so let me see like how it goes for the next one and a half hour or so and then let me um, have some post processing techniques why because uh, 30 to 40% uh, some of the uh, products uh, may go the contribute uh, the cost i am talking about the post processing cost of a particular product a particular application typically even it may go up to 30% or 40% of the cost that um, the 3d printing cost if you calculate maybe it may be contributing 30 to 40 percent also it may be more than that also so then there must be some kind of post processing technique should be discussed and it should be um say how it is um, getting influenced on this um, part quality or the mechanical properties or so on and so forth and then finally the fabrication challenges in metal 3d printing that's what i have planned for the next uh, one and a half hour so then let me quickly introduce though i know i know that it's a second day um uh, uh, or the third day I'm, i'm not sure but anyway yeah that's that's that's, uh, that's going to be is the here the introduction part uh, so probably i can quickly uh, run through this uh, maybe uh, i don't know whether the previous speaker might have talked about probably might have covered so uh, as we understood the industry 1.0 or the first industrial revolution was uh, steam and power um, steam power and the water power was the used uh, um, replacing the human muscle power uh, um, with this uh, steam power or the water power uh, so called mechanization right so that was the uh, technology coined in uh, during uh, first industrial revolution so called um, um, 
mechanization that is uh, during 1780s to 1860s uh, so the human muscle power is replaced with the mechanical production or the mechanical machines so, so that's called mechanization right and then slowly it has migrated towards assembly lines um, um, and electric power so the 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 steam power and uh, water power is replaced with an electric power and that is during 1870s to 1960s um and the third industrial revolution so that is um during 70s 1970s to 2010 so that was automation as we know that and electronics computing so the major breakthrough was um, say pc the the personal computer and the information technology so on and so forth but right now we are in the industry 4.0 so then 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 uh, what is the importance of uh, additive in in the scenario of industry 4.0 so uh you may you may uh, uh, expose to other um uh, say tools or the technologies which are related to industry 4.0 autonomous systems cloud computing system integration simulation iot augmented reality big data analysis uh, cyber security and manufacturing goes uh, additive nature so the it is getting shaped uh, into additive so uh, that's what uh, some of the uh, surveys are saying that it's going to be additive is going to be the major uh, manufacturing practice during industry 4.0 so yeah um, a typical uh, steps involved uh, as uh, you might have uh, understood um, previously also like uh, you start with the cad model converting stl file and transferring it to, into a machine um pre processing software and set up the process parameters um, like uh, say layer thickness uh, say orientation if it is fdm machine maybe maybe your uh, extrusion uh, head speed or the flow or the pressure or you have a plenty of uh, parameters to be set during your um, um uh, the kind of uh, pre processing or which you are going to make some codes or uh, the slice data um, or the machine setup whatever you call so then you set all that parameters based on your technology available laser driven you set all the laser uh, um are related parameters like laser power or uh, laser scan speed so on and so forth and if it is fdm you you set uh, the infill density or you set the nozzle speed or um, say air air gap so on and so forth say it so depends on what kind of technology then you you uh, otherwise also fine it may take some default parameters but that's not the good practice why because you don't have an astm standards to say that whether you have made a, a good quality part or a bad quality or it's a defect so then we one can understand about the process parameters so then accordingly we need to set those and then generate A, a machine setup, something like a G code in case of uh, CNC. But unfortunately, you don't have any standards here. Uh, various uh, uh, vendors may be using, uh, say, one vendor may be using .dot CLI, and one another vendor may be using .dot SLI, or maybe um, say you have RPSI, or you have a lot of. Uh, uh, there, there is no such standard for. um giving a machine setup data to any of your am system so each um vendor may be having his own way of uh, uh, file format to send the instructions or to send something like your g code in case of uh, um say extrusion system it got standardized people may be saying g code but it's not so happen with the powder bed and other um technologies so then one can understand about this stuff and then otherwise garbage in garbage out right say you cannot uh, um explore the, the advantage of uh, additive or the 3d printing once you you are not aware of these parameters and then working on them and setting it at the optimum level so then once you're done all that stuff and then you you your machine or your uh, 3d printer can take up physically whatever you done here uh, uh, virtually uh digital slicing support generation or tool path or um uh, whatever may be the process that you have undergone here virtually that's going to be replicated physically here layer by layer and do um say 
uh, remove the part from the machine and you have some supports remove it um, and you have some kind of uh, post processing is needed depends on application and depends uh, on your um, uh, requirement say you are looking for 100% dense but your machine is not able to give 100% density then we need to go some heaping or we need to go some other heat treatment process to in order to enhance your as built part uh, to close to the rot or as close to the your um, um, conventional material properties the physical uh, or still it is there is a gap uh, between these two but though your design for additive manufacturing will will fetch you almost uh, uh, near to rot properties so, so that's uh, the intention um, say and then your application uh, is ready after doing the post processing uh, methods uh, um, yeah the, 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 with this uh, so any typical 3d printing process it should undergo uh, here and there maybe depends on the raw material and depends on the technology and depends on different post processing methods here and there some kind of uh, deviations but in total it must have this kind of uh, eight uh, uh, steps it should follow um so then material is a major concern uh, say for any technology as we know like uh, you have a polymers you have metals ceramics composites apart from the standard materials even you have a functional material electronic material shape memory biology food lot of stuff not only the standard uh, materials even it can be it can be it can be anything uh, uh, almost you can you can make it uh, any stuff um say now you have a 4d printing is also on right say you can even you can make it a shape memory or you can have a smart materials could also be the material input for this technology but uh, you may call at the time it may be 4d printing but right now it may be 3d printing if you take these materials right so and then the form of the material may be a powder in granular and maybe filament wire or rod or sheet or a liquid and anyway we are going to see all these um, processes with the latest advancements not the uh, i'm going to talk about almost uh, the uh, what are the recent advancements of these uh, technologies so to 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 sum it up the materials and the polymer probably probably it going to be um, a thermoset plastic maybe again you have a semi crystalline amorphous um really well known pla and abs for the, the commodity or domestic applications and if you go ahead means like um, um, uh, the printing temperature may be increased and the performance and the cost is also improved once you um traverse from the bottom of the triangle to the apex of the triangle say you may have a nylon or you may have a pc polycarbonate which is a better properties than the PLA or ABS that is on the commodity application, and of course you do have high performance materials like a PEEK or a PEI for aerospace or medical applications for light weighting, so more strength to weight ratio. Of course, it may add more cost and more at the melting point temperature may be high. So if you traverse from bottom to to top of the triangle, um, and apart from this, you have epoxy resins. Probably the earlier speaker might have talked it, but anyway. i just i want to give you the glimpse of uh, i put some of the material the metals and the metal alloys uh, you have a lot of uh, stainless steel um, um, alloys uh, um, a 316l or ss310 or ss174 and plenty so i put only the well known but uh, you can tailor made your uh, uh, thanks to the open uh, uh, kind of uh, architecture nowadays uh, Our platforms are open to that, uh, so then you can you can make your own material, you can prepare your own material, but stick to the standards. So then you can you can have a tool tool steel maybe uh, well known like uh, H thirteen A two M S one, and then aluminium. You have a lot of seven M G, twelve M G, ten M G. You have plenty of aluminium uh, alloys, uh, of course, and titanium six four six five commercially pure E L I. You have a lot of uh, titanium alloys. Do print and then cobalt chrome tungsten nickel alloy inconel hast alloy copper gold silver you can add lot of stuff here the, the metal and metal alloys and ceramics um, say you have a zirconia you have a different grades of zirconia and silicon nitrate alumina alumina tough with zirconia or silica or even uh, calcium phosphate uh, 
um, family may have uh, hydroxy appetite is one very famous uh, in medical and other applications so, so then you have um, cardiac right some kind of uh, clay uh, kind of uh, clay kind of materials uh, and the ceramic you can even have other ceramics also but i have kept only um so well known ceramics uh, which it can be 3d printable so that's that's the, that's the thing um and then co coming to the composites so the composites you have frp like uh, you have, have a onyx or a nylon you have a, a kind of a fiber reinforced uh, plastics and of course you do have a continuous fibers like carbon fiber kevlar fiberglass hdst fiberglass and of course metal matrix composites so these are uh, the uh, composites uh, available, uh, but relatively composites is uh, new, but started with the polymers and then metals and then now the composites and ceramics also gaining a lot of uh, momentum in 3D printing scenario. Um, say, apart from the standard four materials, you do print wax, you do print sand, you do print even glass. So it's going to be the toughest material to process, but, but people could be able to print in glass and other material like concrete. So for the construction industry, same. And of course, uh, for bioprinting, even you can use a living cells of your own living cells as a material. And of course, their own skin can be cultivated or can be, can be printed and can be, can be um, say, introduced uh, into your own body. So that's, that's the beauty of this technology, right? And even food also is another uh, material which we can even print it. It can be, it can be more also. So to, to, to give you a very well-known materials. Uh, so these are the stuff. So then let us um, go to the, uh, of course we, it can be a multi-material, which uh, otherwise it may be a tough uh, or it may be um, uh, conventionally, it may not be that kind of a viable solution. Um, say then it can be quite possible here, like a, uh, functionally graded materials or the multiple materials or metal matrix composites uh, yeah it's 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 quite common here like which we can we can work on these uh, kind of a stuff so let me talk one by one so but uh, this is a bit older um, a slide uh, maybe maybe five six year old um five six year old you may have a limited uh, um, material choices, uh, maybe metal ceramic, uh, uh, polymer metal ceramic, sand, um, or sand metal ceramic, and polymer food, living cells, polymer wax, um, metal, uh, you have organic materials, also natural material, polymer ceramics. But, but now, now, now almost like my topic will be on metal ceramic and composites. So I can, I can put, I can put um all this stuff in all these seven classification that's my intention why i've kept this kind of a slide here is uh, that we'll see like how it can be um for possible so let us start with uh, the vat photopolymerization system so what is this vat photopolymerization process system so this was the um one the check hull was started um, this um, uh, 3d printing idea in 1988 89 commercially and 82 you filed the patent uh, so at the time it was only the rapid prototyping where you used to make only the um, prototypes right so that with the epoxy resin basically a polymer a, a thermoset kind of a polymer um yeah so i am not going to um uh, say discuss about the polymer side of it but my intention to talk here is uh, though this vat system has started with sla with uh, started with the plastics epoxy resins uh, through curing of the lasers so then slowly it has uh, improved the speed in terms of speed maybe um 10 times faster than approximately or it may be more than that with the sla and dlp so which uh, your laser is replaced with a projector um even the projector can even be now um, LED kind of uh, uh, technology with the oxygen permeable layer, layer, it may be 100 times faster than the, the, um, the, the old SLA technology, um, say, uh, but, but the material is plastic. But, but the interesting stuff here is even you can do ceramic and metals with this kind of uh, VAT system. Uh, though it is not a direct step, you may get doubt that 
don't expect that um, as built is a single step it's going to get the metal but it may undergo in between some intermediate step of yeah yes but uh, uh, to just an idea sla dlp and uh, lcd how it will work i will run through a, a small video uh, which can uh, give you an idea about the sla um dlp and uh, led or lcd based uh, technology say uh, as we know that uh, this technology is started uh, uh, i don't know whether this video is playing okay yeah so um say esla dlp and um uh lcd so you don't have any uh, audio i only video i'm playing it so anyway you start with time time say 40 layers means 40 times uh curing so then you have introduced which it can be higher layer in a single attempt so it may be the more faster like how you can generate your uh, um uh, mask for the xerox machine xerox kind of stuff uh, how you can make a, a mask of that and similar way probably the same light you may have the light source and it can be um uh, exposed say something like your uh, um, projector like you were uh, a movie theater where you can see some projector it's very similar to that and it's going to um, project the light and there is a light sensitive resin so that's uh, going to be cured and you will you will be controlled that cross section as for uh, the design as for the um, uh, uh, the design which you have uh, done in the software that is going to be you for light at a time it's going to uh, cure that entire layer so and similar technology like how you use for the um, say your cell phone your smartphone your lcd um, display similar way you are going to use a lcd technology uh, not for displaying it not it's for printing the same analogy so it may even um, go use the same technology here but lcd a bit um, uh, maintenance may be more for the lcd but led is also now is on so you can but led may bit costly than lcd lcd is supposed to be the of course the cheaper one so that that's all about uh, the um, say lcd and um, dlp kind of technology but uh, sla as we know that it's only a single point laser it will take hell lot of time to process um, you know, the material right so it will take a lot of time to process uh, and of course is a costly also but nowadays you have a desktop um, sla or a dlp printer which you can afford to buy maybe around uh, maybe around 2 lakhs or maybe it may be 1.5 lakh also it may start uh, you have the dlp or a laser or a, um, lcd based technology of course the desktop in nature my my intention is to put it here as a desktop nature uh, when it was started it was very costly a fire as we know that so that's about the polymer side but um, what about the metal and ceramic can can we can we use the same technology to to print um, you know, ceramics or metals yes so how do you do that so you can you can do it um, say here you are going to take uh, your intended the material is a ceramic so you 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 mix that um, uh, um, ceramic uh, powder with the uh, uv sensible light that is a resin so basically you use resin for the conventional sla dlp and uh, led technology but uh, here you are going to mix uh, we are making a slurry of uh, the ceramic as well as with the um, epoxy resin so then it works with the same principle you have a light and now the raw material is not like a, a purely uh, a liquid but it's a slurry um, that slurry will be, uh, say, keep on supplying from this side to this side, which you can see. 
and during that time so you have a projector light from the bottom so and then that projector light or uh, the uv light um we have a dmd that is a digital micrometer device chip so then it's going to be it's something like your led technology how it works but similar thing but you are uh, curing it in a pixel by pixel and once you have done that then you have a debinding uh, um, thing which we need to debind the plastic uh, or the epoxy stuff which we need to take it out from that uh, um, say ceramic or the metal plus uh, um, your uh, polymer then finally we need to do a sintering of uh, uh, this stuff and keep it in a sintering um, uh, uh, furnace and then do final material properties like um, you, you can of course we do agree there will be a shrinkage and do add it in this you can compensate that stuff um, um, in the CAD itself so th th this is um, say an idea or it's it's an upcoming or a very few players uh, uh, under this ceramic or a metal um, printing through VAT system I'm talking about through VAT photopolymerization maybe through um, LED or a DLP or a uh, LCD based technology so which it can even print ceramic or um, metal so uh, the same guy I'm talking about here uh, which we are uh, discussing through video um, the same guy so then which you have these are the, some of the ceramic uh, parts that got printed and similar case for the metals also so we need to uh, do debinding and then followed by sintering so then you can get uh, the ceramic or the metal parts uh, so for investment casting here maybe uh, this is a sinter one this is unsinter one and maybe after uh, casting so uh, this is uh, quite uh, um, uh, possible with the sla or a dlp so one can understand uh, um, the cost of these uh, um, sla or a dlp kind of a technology is now very cheap uh, it's not that kind of expensive so then you could be able to do it the ceramics uh, and the metals it's quite wonderful right so you're not uh, spending uh, say five crores or four crores of uh, rupees for buying a, a powder bed system for metal processing right so um, and of course uh, you can even uh, have other uh, um, similar technology start with the photo curable slurry and then dmd light exposed and debinding followed by sintering so you can see a lot of uh, ceramic stuff maybe um, aluminum oxide zirconium oxide silica nitrate hydroxyapatite tricalcium phosphate silica based ceramics so, so these are quite possible with this kind of uh, uh, manufacturing that is a light a digital light processing called dlp based uh, technology so um, so though you have not much uh, uh, say i can say the epoxy resins are very well known famous for the um, the previous the same material which for the material jetting the same material which normally you take for the sla um, or the vat system which we discussed previously here also the raw material is same typically it is an epoxy resin photosensitive epoxy resin um, but but the intention here is you're talking about metals how it get can be um, jetting jetting the metal so is it a challenging yes definitely it's a challenging yeah um, say you may uh, have the material jetting system so typical material jetting system it will work with the plastics uh, so means again the epoxy resin so instead of uh, um, uh, taking it in a vat you jet from the nozzles so that's the idea here jetting something like inkjet printer so you jet the material the epoxy resin instead of a vat or a tank previously you took it now you jet it and simultaneously you expose to uv light and it will get cured so that is the idea of uh, material jetting uh, uh, from the israel technology called object but now it is uh, uh, merged with the status um, uh, company so uh, it's not uh, so exciting you why because um, um, so it's again you may say polymer and maybe met, uh, various uh, material multiple materials may be possible multi-color may be possible with this uh, you have a dedicated uh, nozzles to do that job uh, that's fine and then even wax can be done with the similar stuff but maybe it's kind of some kind of hybrid you do mill it some why because it's a wax only so you can do a soft milling it here to get uh, for especially for the uh, jewelry and um, medical applications or dental applications for making 
um, um, making an investment uh, uh, wax kind of a pattern that people used to use this. But the, the, the latest one is the metal. So can you cure with the heat? But here you do have a light here, but here you don't have a light as such here. There is a heating curing will be done maybe through some kind of mechanism. We'll see how it can be. Um, say it can be a na nanoparticle jetting so which you can jet the metals. So that is an idea here. Um, I hope you might have um, with the assumption that you know how a material jetting system works as I explained. So you have um, the material should be jetting from the nozzle and simultaneously get it cured with the um, UV light. That's the idea. But here uh, what is this um, say nanoparticle jetting uh, metal uh, printing through material jetting. So here you are going to prepare a, a kind of a raw material uh, that is a metal you are going to jet it of course challenging one it's not that much easy to jet it but though these are some of the parts previously that showed uh, but how do you make this uh, material the preparation of material uh, is going to be uh, the, the critical stuff here like um, how do you how do you prepare your uh, nanoparticle kind of a stuff in which is embedded in some kind of a, um, say liquid kind of a stuff and then it can be can be jetted from the nozzle so that is a challenging one and do you can prepare uh, of course you do start with uh, any process it should start with the CAD model so then you start with the CAD modeling of that stuff and then uh, of course you may have supports also here support metal so you can you can you can start um, printing it uh, through that nozzle so maybe you can dedicate some of the nozzles for the support and some of the nozzles for the model or this metal kind of um, uh, uh, liquid so which it's getting um, so the biggest advantage here is uh, like uh, you can go a nanoparticle you are going to uh, put these nanoparticles uh, uh, and then you can go up to two micron layer thickness that is a beauty as of now, it may be 100 micron or a 20 micron for SLA, uh, but here it can go up to 2 micron. And then depends on the type of material you are using, the temperature will, um, uh, you have to uh, go up to that temperature, uh, depends on the material which you are going to process it. So you can, um, yeah, so then once you jet that, uh, uh, the metal uh, stuff, then then you are going to, uh, get these kind of uh, metal parts so uh, but there will be a lot of challenges i do agree to to come out with this kind of uh, um, metal but it's it's possible it's possible and and though it is a, it is a commercial machine so but uh, people has made a lot of uh, efforts previously uh, filing the patents and then then the, this is a commercial machine i'm talking about yes it's uh, even uh, but it's at the initial stage but plastics and waxes are quite common with the material that you so i do agree you have a lot of uh, stuff and the polymer with the different colors different materials but now we are talking about the metals and ceramics right so that's our focus uh, so then you can even print um, maybe 500 degrees c then depends on again the material um, maybe it can be possible with the ceramic uh, the final sintering will be done it's not single step then you do remember that and then final sintering and then you have a water soluble support to remove your support stuff and then even you have another technology from aftermac that is aerosol jet um, printing for especially for the electronic um, applications maybe antennas a smartphone antennas uh, things like that so even it can be again a material jetting stuff so where you have an atomizer you are going to prepare your uh, um, ink um, jar in which it will atomize your small droplets uh, and which it will be coming from this kind of um, uh, orifice. So then you once you create that atomized uh, um, kind of a stuff, your material, uh, the droplets, so you created uh, nano droplets and then that droplets are coming um, and then you have an orifice here and then it will come from that. And then it will be, um, once it is uh, jetted, uh, this aerosol, normally they'll call it as an aerosol, so this aerosol, the nano-sized particles, um, the, again, the tricky part here is how do you make that um, uh, the uh, raw material? That's, then once you have that um, 
uh, you have some excess gas in that definitely and then we need to um, uh, create a, a more dense uh, thing by removing that gas particles so further you can even um, make it more uh, dense particles which is uh, yes now it is jetting from this uh, uh, deposition head um, and you may have the shrewd gas also along with that you will be uh, pumping from uh, that and uh, through that orifice now it is getting um, say uh, uh, through the shield uh, shield gas it's coming and it's getting uh, uh, deposited from this nozzle and and this is a typical air shell uh, basically it's a material jetting technology where you can make um, such kind of a sensitive items like uh, electronic um, uh, antennas or kind of a stuff which you can it's quite um advanced applications we can put it say uh, as i said like metal ceramics uh, so um in contrast with the powder bed say there is no powder here um so and then it's uh, almost five times faster than your powder bed system uh, we'll see what is that powder bed system basically so um, the powder bed system uh, compared to that it may be five times faster and it may be uh, 10 times cheaper also 10 or more, more more than that so then smooth surface finish maybe you can achieve and extreme low shrinkage uh, eight times lesser than the um, metal injection molding so it's almost similar uh, somewhat similar to the metal injection molding right same um, so it may be um, eight times uh, lesser than as far as a uh, shrinkage is concerned if you do compare with the conventional metal injection molding stuff and uh, isotropic uniformity and 99.9 percent .9 dense and of course it depends temperature you have a different material choices uh, so then you can go with uh, uh, the uh, printing temperature varies with that uh, it depends on the material which you are going to print it and finally simply can get your um, uh, part ready and similar technology like uh, uh, jet printing of multi metal um, from Vader, the Vader is recently the Xerox. Xerox, you know, this is a company. Um, recently, they have acquired this Vader uh, technology. It's basically a magnetic kind of a jet. Means you have a pulsed input. The basic idea is how do you melt or how do you um, make it uh, droplets of uh, metal? That's that's the idea, right? So then you have the aluminum or any aluminum, titanium or um, ferrous or uh, any kind of uh, metal material maybe copper even and it can be uh, chromium kind of stuff any any material you bring it in the form of aluminium wire spoon and then you 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 um, you you melt it basically you have this kind of uh, uh, electromagnetic pulsing here so you melt it and you have a nozzle maybe ceramic nozzle which can capable of taking you know high temperatures of course you have to make the nozzle in that way and then the droplets will be falling here on the substrate and further and one layer upon another layer so you can go with aluminium titanium iron uh, chromium and then copper so then vary the temperature as for that so yeah and then the xz as we discussed previously also like you can have the ceramics so these are the alumina and zirconia ceramics that is got printed uh, to a nano particle jetting technology previously that video also we have seen um, so even have a ceramic drill bit um, uh, with uh, the uh, cooling channels so one more advantage as we know that you can even make a, a conformal cooling channel so that's uh, that's the beauty of this technology otherwise you cannot do it conventionally right so you can even have a multi material printing is also quite possible you have the option like uh, uh, different um, um, nozzle heads uh, to, so then you can you can introduce the different materials uh, so that's like yeah so you can steel and ceramic uh, so but this is unsinted and then you can sinter it and and this is the um, idea of uh, um, a ceramic and metal printing in case of material jetting and let us uh, move on to the next technology that is a binder jetting so what is the basic difference between the material jetting and binder jetting so here um, uh, again the jetting technology but instead of material you may be jetting the binder that's only the difference then what could be the raw material raw material will be the uh, powder again in case of a powder bed system you can make the powder here also the raw material is powder but uh, no laser um, no heater uh, nothing but there is only a binder so binder will do your job um, 
so how do you do that so you can even have this uh, binary rating system previously um of course started with some kind of uh, um polymers initially and then uh, gypsum sand kind of a stuff is very well known for kind of um, uh, sand mold sand cores it was uh, um for tooling applications it was very quite um, uh, handy for such kind of applications and now it is metal so you can even go for the metals um of course ceramics so and uh, under this binder jetting so the name itself jetting a binder and raw material is powder so jet it so um, then it depends various binders will be a uh, the 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 compatible with the different materials maybe metal you have a polymeric binder or or other binder to to compatible with the uh, um uh, the uh, source material the raw material right so then now there is a one new entrant in this uh, technology is hp if you know that hp they are by two dimensional printers so now they have a multi jet fusion but again it's a polymers uh, but our business will be on much focus on the ceramic and metals so so um, um so either it can be a sand uh, sand is quite common they started with the binder uh, so the idea here is same which is take the uh, raw material is a powder uh, sand in the granular form and you jet the binder and getting bonding together and get um, uh, your uh, part ready and then let me focus on the metal so what uh, a metal um, is all about the binder jetting technology making the metal parts so of course um, uh, we do start with uh, the uh, design um, and this is a typical uh, x1 machine for metal printing um, so you, you you have to start with uh, anyway start with the cad model that is essential for any uh, technology any material that you should and you start with um, and then you load the material um, that is a powder in form so then you start printing it basically it's a jetting technology you have a, 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 a jet head so, so right now it's a steel um uh, and the bronze is also you can and then right now it's curing the um the new layer so yeah and then you can even clean automatic cleaning of uh, this right now which you can see right, the the binder is jetting from that and self cleaning of this print head uh can be done and then come and then again jet um and once you have done this kind of uh, uh jetting onto that our binder is uh, um jetted onto the raw material and directly it's a green part basically right so you cannot uh, get uh, the solid part directly so then you um take it unload it and put it in a, a kind of a, a stuff here to um a deep order the table and now it will be loaded uh, um for uh, uh, the deep ordering and cleaning it and once you do that um, so which you can see this is a green part right so then 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 we need to do infiltration on that uh, so of course uh, you, you can you can load this part in a crucible and you add the infiltrant in a proportionate way um yeah and then of course uh, you you add that infiltrant Uh, and now put it putting it in this kind of uh, a crucible uh, uh, loaded in the furnace uh, and then you uh, you introduce that infiltrant uh, in this uh, furnace so then through uh, this uh, gates uh, so then that infiltrant will come and then it will um, which you can see this is the infiltrant is coming and um, this infiltrant will 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 go and uh, the, the process starts and you have this gating system and then it will come and occupy and and it and it will get it um, um yeah once it has done this uh, uh the infiltration step the, the in the in the furnace you keep it for long time and then it will be you know coming out with this kind of a metal uh, part right so this is uh, uh, the uh though it's not a direct step uh, but definitely even some other systems also not the direct you can get it this kind of a materials maybe you do go with the furnace treatment or kind of infiltration furnace treatment you do it so then this is about uh, the uh, binder jetting of metals um and of course you can you can even uh, uh, have basically this is a combination of uh, jetting as well as uh, uh the raw material is a powder and then you have an inkjet uh, kind of a stuff 
and which you will be will be printing that and it will be uh, the binder will be going uh, so it will be settling and then you have an ir uh, light to get it um, uh, sintered fully in the furnace and this is what is going to happen right this is your metal um, part which it can be come out uh, from uh, the after uh, infiltration uh, and 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 then the same thing for the ceramics so you start with binder jetting and debinding it and sintering it uh, so the, the, this is a typical machine that uh, you can use it for this purpose and these are the the ceramic parts uh, like uh, silicon carbide or alumina and zirconia and boron carbide so these are the ceramics that got 3d printed through binder jetting technology so uh and anyway this we have discussed through the video so even it can be um uh, but it's not a direct step i do agree but it's, it's quite uh, gettable and that cost of uh, this uh, system uh, maybe if you compare with uh, the uh, um powder bed metal systems definitely it may be uh, four, four times or it may be even 10 times cheaper than the conventional powder bed systems which can be uh, using a metal printings so then you can go with sand ceramic plastics also you can do metals and and we have to use an appropriate binder for the appropriate material like you can use a phenolic binder maybe for metals or something like that and you can have a water based ceramics maybe for plastics or kind of stuff or silicate uh, silicate based ceramic binder so for you can use the appropriate binder for the appropriate material and, and then and uh, do it so anyway this we have discussed through video so then that's an idea here like binder jetting of metals so can be done so then we will come to the next uh, technology that is extrusion based system so the extrusion based system is very popular as far as this uh, uh, among all the seven uh, processes right so why because so it's very um, cheap rather than um, you have a diy kind of uh, uh, stuff also under this extrusion based system um so because of the patents expire expiration um and relatively easy for the polymers so that's that's uh, maybe pla or abs so it's quite gettable um but can it be can it be metal uh, and ceramics can be printed or even composites the answer is yes so you, even you can you can use your extrusion based system for uh printing composites and ceramics some extent and composites and metals are quite common even for uh, the latest developments are happening under this uh, extrusion based systems the composites and plastics uh, of course and now it's a metals so then we uh, i think you may uh, with the assumption that uh, the fdm how it will work uh, but uh, the same analogy so you may have two um, heads here so one can be a base material and other can be a continuous fiber kind of a stuff or they basically it's a composite so then you can have uh, so one head may be dedicated it's it's quite uh, similar uh, to your fdm conventional fdm system basically right uh, but only thing is the material uh, you have two print heads and uh, one may be plastic uh, matrix it is getting printed so one can be um, so it can be there is a choked carbon fiber or a reinforced or a nylon uh, so that kind of a stuff it, it will be reinforced right so then you have two dedicated nozzles so one is for uh, that stuff the carbon fibers and fiber glasses and kevlar and then it's just uh, uh, hd fiber glasses is uh, possible with this um, uh, but it works with the same principle normally what it will work for uh, a conventional fdm system so rest will be same so you have to um uh, so this is uh, the uh, kind of uh, players like mark forge or um, you have desktop metal there is another company um say in order to uh, print a composite and of course you can print the metal also so metal through extrusion system so how it is possible so then instead of uh, metal uh, the the polymer filament or a wire so you 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 take a metal rod so metal rod of maybe 1 inch or maybe half inch um, or quarter inch maybe around quarter inch uh, um size uh, um rod metal rod maybe steel or maybe uh, any uh, conventional uh, metal which you could do it so then anyway start with the cad model and then do printing it so right right now which you can see that is a metal rod previously it was showing so the raw material is a metal rod then you can come out uh, with uh, 
uh, yes so now which you can see it's um, getting printed through this extrusion nozzle um, you have two nozzles uh, do you can have the support as well as you can have the a model uh, so both can be printed and of course it should be followed with the debinding uh, kind of stuff you have a debinder um, kind of stuff here we we, we need to debind um, uh, the 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 polymer or the kind of stuff which is uh, along with uh, your uh, metal um, so then and finally we do sinter um, sintering it in a sintering furnace so where you can get um, say 100% uh, tense parts of after keeping it in a um, say your uh, uh, sintering station um, uh, so then it can be easily removable your support stuff uh, and once you remove that supports and then finally you will be left out um, uh, with this yeah which you can see so remove those supports um, yeah and then finally you are end up with this kind of a metal part uh, so uh, this is the technology so these are all metal parts it's got 3d printed through extrusion or FDM, similar to FDM based uh, technology. So that's what now, now this technology is even much uh, of reaching to uh, everyone. Um, so uh, we can see this desktop metal is also another uh, revolution in metal printing. Um, yeah, so that, that much uh, we can talk about, like say, yeah, FDM normally you are, it is very much popular for the thermoplastic PLA, ABS, uh, and other stuff. And now it is metal, ceramics, and fiber fillers. So that's that's the that's the development under this FDM-based technology. Um, now our topic will be on the composites and the metal metal or ceramic. So the same thing can be extended for the ceramic uh, rods. You can make a ceramic rod or a metal rod. So which you can make a 316 steel um, through FDM and then this is a ceramic uh, uh, and of course it requires sintering step to finally come out with this kind of 100% uh, um, dense uh, parts and then it can be a clay kind of a paste like um, for extrusion based uh, uh, stuff for uh, a clay kind of a paste maybe some kind of uh, clay the ceramic kind of material which it can be. And this is another ceramic based uh, FDM based ceramic printing where you can see this some of the ceramics uh, and again in this case it is a filament like uh, our conventional filament maybe 3 mm or 1.75 mm filament so but you may be operating at higher temperature of course maybe in the sintering uh, you will be debinding and sintering maybe at around 1200 to 1500 degrees C so which the plastic is removed and the pure ceramic will be so means we need to um, say do uh, uh, say ceramic filament is a normal is alumina or zirconia and then carbide like you have silicon carbide and nitrate and of course metals also is quite possible either stainless steel or tungsten carbide so this is about uh, even you can have even uh, fiber uh, layering or a weaving kind of stuff uh, the, the carbon the, the the ceramic fiber reinforced uh, composite materials uh, so for the aerospace industry like from the airbus so they are using a carbon fiber is brain is branded into the aircraft components um, and of course this is a mark forged in the video also which we have seen this uh, high strength uh, brake lever which is of uh, 3d composite ftm printer embedded in the continuous fiber uh, carbon fibers uh, uh, that is also quite possible and anyway this also we discussed in uh, in terms of uh, the desktop metal printing start with um, the metal rod the filament in the no filament here it's a metal rod and print it debinding it and sinter it and get your 100% dense uh, steel part or ceramic part so uh, and let us move on to the next uh, the technology like a sheet lamination the sheet lamination is uh, supposed to be the one of the earliest uh, uh, technologies like um, LOM, that is laminated object manufacturing, where uh, a kind of a paper-based or a kind of um, a starch-based material they used to use. But uh, now it can be a metal sheet or it, now it can be 
uh, is ceramic sheets. Uh, you bring it the raw material in form of a sheet. So that is the idea of any sheet lamination, right? So you bring the raw material in the form of a sheet. Um, say it can be a composite or it can be a paper, and now it can be a um, say fiber reinforced composite or the metal. We'll discuss. We'll focus on this um, these uh, two materials right now at this point of time. So. Uh, how do you do a fiber reinforced composite uh, to this LOM layer, the laminated uh, uh, or a sheet lamination based technology? So then uh, you start uh, with a kind of uh, uh, fiber reinforced composite. This is the final part, but uh, you, you do start with uh, the CAD modeling as usual, like um, it should be uh, with any of these additive manufacturing systems. Then you feed this fiber sheet to, to print it and use the inkjet heads to contain wetting fluid. So onto this uh, layered uh, shapes onto the fiber. So now they spread this polymer powder over that uh, you know, fiber sheet and where you have wetted uh, layers which is get uh, jetted and remove this non-adhesive powder from that. And which you can see now you have, uh, you know, these just sh the, the uh, sheets or uh, you take those uh, things and you stack it and then you stack that stuff and you compress it to fuse the layers and form the solid object like this and then you can remove that uh, uncoated fibers um, uh, uh, from that and then which you can see you have uh, it seems like uh, a bit of uh, conflict with uh, saying that the scrap zero but maybe a bit of scrap is involved here why because you are doing sheet by sheet and in a kind of a cube cuboid you are building it irrespective of your um, um, the, the, the form of the geometry. Um, yeah. And then it can be extended. Now you have technologies like, um, ultrasonic consolidation meet some kind of, uh, welding technique, like say, if it is softer material, then you can easily stick it. Uh, but if it is a metal, a metal sheet or the metal, uh, rods, then definitely we need to have some kind of, uh, welding technique here. We need to, Adopt. So basically, what kind of welding technique? It's ultrasonic welding. So it is a solid state welding, right? So which you can see in the raw material is something like a tape. So that will be laying, um, uh, say, one to the adjacent to other one. And then your uh, ultrasonic uh, sonnet road so will be joining. And further, it will be followed with some end milling cutter. So basically, it's a hybrid kind of a stuff. Uh, so where you can exploit the advantages of uh, the subtractive and as well as um, the additive, why? Because uh, you are going to get the advantages uh, from the additive nature, the complexity, and the subtractive nature, the accuracy. Uh, and um, uh, say here, so it's a combination of uh, the uh, welding and uh, basically the the milling. So, so then you can start uh, this metal, uh, sheets and this is a very great flex greater flexibility in terms of uh, embedding of uh, some parts in this also that's uh, another idea so you can even um, do say uh, uh, see how this die is made uh, through this uh, uh, ultrasonic consolidation so uh, you can see some scars i do agree but uh, like uh, that's that is after post processing wherever you have the working uh, faces of your die so which it's uh, uh, say through machining. So the, the biggest idea, as you know, that uh, you will get uh, a very good surface finish uh, is the major strength of your machining technique, right? Say, and the complexity is the major driving course for the additive um, fabrication. So then you are going to get a single um, process that's called ultrasonic consolidation, which will come under sheet lamination technique. So anyway, this was the initial stuff, but now we are talking about um, um, ultrasonic welding and uh, it's a CNC um, a laser contour machining basically, uh, which we discussed. Uh, so the material, material, raw material, maybe in terms of a tape, um, say uh, maybe half inch tape, uh, then you have different met metals is quite possible. And, and we have seen some composite based uh, uh, say a carbon fiber composites, uh, how it getting uh, printed through sheet lamination technique. Um, yeah, so two further advantages, if you talk about the ultrasonic consolidation, 
uh, or welding basically it's a kind of a welding process right basically you have an ultrasonic welding um a sonnet road and then you have a cnc contour milling so followed by cnc contouring so it's like something like a bigger machine like your cnc machine so the advantage is here you can make a functionally graded laminates and embedded electronics for the sensors metal matrix composites so that's that's um, the unique advantages so that you can come across uh, this kind of um, uh, ultrasonic consolidation kind of uh, technology yeah this we have already discussed through that video so then you have a printing on the fiber of uh, fabric sheets and sheet compression and then remove the unbonded area and get your uh, composite the fiber reinforced uh, composite um and of course see the some re recent uh, developments under this uh, um sheet lamination you have a fab fabrisonic has formed and joint venture with uh, ews and solidica actually uh, for selling uh, uh, different platforms are based on the higher power uh, sonnet road i am talking about the ultrasonic consolidation and the developments in the ultrasonic consolidations um uh, so as i said this, this technology was started with a paper based um, material uh, but now that paper based uh, they used to use a laser power actually but for processing paper uh, the laser is not at all required but the initial mindset of the people is in that way but uh, now uh, now this mcor irish technology they have replaced um, the laser with the ordinary cutting knife right so it's a, basically it's a a4 sheet or a legal size sheet of paper that it's going to be printed so then um, so then you have some uh, solid state uh, 3d printing methods being investigated uh, that's what um, um, there will be a much focus on this area where uh, uh, the further uh, developments is going to uh, see very soon or under development this kind of a sheet lamination scenario and let me come to the powder bed uh, fusion this is very um, expensive but very popular than among all the uh, for the metal printing i am talking about as far as metal printing is uh, um, concerned of course the powder bed is going to be the much uh, sounded technology or the famous technology though it's costly uh, but people um, uh, have been using this technology the 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 idea of powder bed as you know that uh, the powder bed fusion means the raw material is taken as a powder and then you are making uh, uh, a bed and you are fusing it or you are melting it so how do you melt it maybe use like, like a, either a laser or electron beam or a plasma so they, you can you can the the plasma also even it can be done but uh, that is under development or under research uh, but none of the commercial machines are available under that plasma thing but uh, you you can have a lot of stuff based on the laser um stuff maybe sls very well known technology selective laser sintering or direct metal laser sintering or uh, selective laser melting called slm or electron beam melting so um so uh, basic idea of any uh, powder bed fusion as we know that you start with the raw material as a powder and then you can end with uh, a metal part like this so, so you have a laser which it will uh, melt the uh, powder particles um, say and then you will get the melted uh, uh, part layer by layer and finally you are going to get this kind of uh, metal part um so uh, this is a typical uh, laser bed system that it will work you can work with a lot of material options uh, even copper or even brass bronze steel aluminum titanium so you have plenty of material choices and alloys so um, then that is about uh, a typical um, say uh, powder bed system uh, using uh, uh, metals as a predominant uh, material raw material predominantly it is a powder form so then this once you remove that metal uh, and the support material is also metal here so then we do we need to do a lot of exercise uh, to remove the supports and further to, to um, uh, short sand blast it or short pinning and then uh, it de depends on your application and the requirement of your uh, accuracy levels uh, and if you are looking at say Sub micron RE value, 
yeah then you can have some methods also to get but as built you may not uh, getting a sub micron uh, ra value but uh, you can you can after post processing you can get it uh, that's about the laser system and you have some electron beam is also the energy source from um orcam that is a swedish technology and subsequently the ge has uh, um uh, bought that technology for their uh, um aero components for especially making uh, gas turbine engine parts uh, the blades uh, the gas turbine blades or um, um so all the engine parts uh, that uh, that's the huge investment that the ge is uh, uh, not only ge like rolls royce um, uh, all the aero guys like uh, airbus or uh, patney and whitney um so honeywell so a lot of um, stuff is going on towards uh, uh, this uh, metal 3d printing using additive manufacturing for aerospace industry you know the advantages like uh, the the bionic designs or the lattice structures or the honeycomb structures so to name a few uh, these are the design freedom that you can have with the additive fabricated parts than the conventional methods so that's what um, how it will work it's uh, it works with the same principle like like you have some um, sweeper or a blade which will spread the powder uh, raw material form and then you instead of laser you have an electron beam but electron beam you have a totally different characteristic right say um say it may be 6 kilowatt electron beam that is going to operate here um so it may be a magnetically driven kind of stuff it's not optically driven so you have several reasons and then you you need to have some vacuum um should be created uh, and then uh you know the uh, the importance of vacuum for electron to be in tandem with uh, that so this is a, a, a typical blade that is got uh, 3d printed um, through metal uh, electron beam It can be a titanium or aluminite titanium aluminite so that is a typical um uh, aero blade that you can directly um 3d print through this kind of uh, stuff so Uh, anyway that is powder handling system so you can even um use this technology and then now there will be a lot of uh, buzz is going on that can be uh, make the parts without supports uh, maybe like companies like valo so they are coined such kind of uh, thing but i am not sure uh, but this is very uh, latest uh, addition in this uh, um uh, a domain uh, this is a new player in this uh, powder bed system so they are claiming that it's no supports are needed maybe not typically 45 degrees on um, um uh, is the threshold value so then we need to give the supports but these guys are t- telling that uh, maybe 10 degree or 20 degree or even there is no supports needed at all so that's going to be the breakthrough if at all um it can be done but they are claiming i'm not sure i never see a kind of a machine from the valo but uh, it's it's uh, it's very uh, uh, recent uh, entrant into this play, this uh, new player um uh, under this domain so yeah and and there's a closed loop uh, is another scenario if you talk about the um the the monitoring and the control in situ monitoring and in situ kind of controlling of these um a process uh, so then it can be even done through a closed loop um, uh, controller kind of a stuff so um of course uh, you may have other stuff maybe similar to the any a typical powder bed system that it's going to work on um say uh, so that's about the valo um it's going to be the new technology under this powder bed system uh yeah so anyway we are going to have us uh, um right to my lecture uh, so we are going to give a demo on this um, um say we have a slm technology that is from 3d systems so this under comes under powder bed laser driven um, system um anyway we discussed a lot about the cbm kind of stuff and even it can be with the polymers and 
can be metal titanium um this is what i'm talking about anyway valo also we have seen through that video that uh, they are claiming that it's going to be um support free metal three d printing that is it's quite interesting and not only that you have a rapid metal printing uh, people are coined uh, in such a way normally um a recoating and uh, sintering or the melting is not happened simultaneously but but these guys are telling that it's it's going to be it's going to be done so that's that's a wonder like if it could be happen uh, such kind of uh, thing and then um and there will be a novel recoating tool they are saying that um, uh, say uh, that's what i'm talking say lasing and recoating can be done simultaneously it's quite interesting um because of that reason you could even able to make it uh, say 55 times faster than the conventional powder bed system why because we need to wait for uh, if you see that uh, uh, the cycle time so then we need to spread the powder you need to sweep the powder and again you have a different dual system uh, but but you cannot laze uh, while recoating but this that's interesting and it's maybe even reducing 55 times um, um, lesser time than the conventional systems or the the right now whatever we are have so and then even it can be uh, 1.96 kg for a titanium per day so that is the typical um deposition we can do it um, maybe 1.9 kg it approx approximately is 2 kg per day you can you can print it um, um but but now it can be a 113 kg per day starts that's the thing so then the, now my intention to put these kind of developments uh, before you is a uh, metal 3d printing is also getting shaped into very fast otherwise it's very slow <laughs> anyway we are going to give a demo on it uh, so it's not that great um, maybe 1 inch cube um, oddly it may take uh, maybe not less than 2 um, hours or 3 hours even i may be exaggerated also but but if you are having this kind of uh, stuff then it can be uh, more uh, viable like as of now people are saying that the lithium manufacturing is very slow right but we can we can we can shut their mouths right once you have these kind of developments coming into picture so uh, it can be a powder bed fusion ceramics is quite possible with the powder bed not only metals uh, it can be a ceramic uh, maybe direct sla um say maybe uh, silicon silicon carbide ceramics with the uh, infiltrant or indirect uh, it can be a kind of a green part and then further anyway we can do that stuff in a furnace um say these are some of the silica silica carbide part and then alumina part and uh, that's indirect sla and aluminum based ceramic uh, parts the direct uh, uh, ceramic parts which can be three d printed through powder bed system and then let us talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of this technology so it's maybe a good part stability and functional part built directly and wide range of materials uh, starts from the polymers metals and ceramics and no part support is needed uh, but maybe applicable for polymers but not the metals uh, ceramics or so but anyway so little post processing is required maybe for some kind of blasting or some kind of sanding and high accuracy large parts can be built and the weaknesses dedicated the systems and high power consumption and maybe large physical size of the system and recent developments uh, many metal laser sintering uh, machine manufacturers we can see a mushroom growth of uh, um, the powder bed system under this uh, space you have slm concept laser us phoenix dinsha realizer trump you have a lot of companies keep on adding here so all the laser guys are coming here to to come out with the powder bed system but though it's very costly all are very costly machines and limited powder uh, power uh, the polymer uh, machine manufacturer and 3d systems and us only the polymer uh, printing uh, apart from the, the, the dedicatedly predominantly it's a metal and ceramic and significant r and d and open source versus closed machine this is a quite interesting scenario uh, um now this metal uh, printing uh, is the second generation we can put it in that way first generation may be polymers the all the first generation um, um machine patents the technological patents got getting expired now the turn for the metals uh, the second generation um um 
uh, 3D printing technologies. Uh, so now you have a closed machine architecture and even open sourceness. That's uh, and even high speed sintering soon. That's what I'm talking about. Say um, it can be interesting. Uh, instead of one kg per hour, it may be 500 kg per hour, right? So it's almost like a huge uh, uh, no, drift. Uh, so then GE bought a Morris technology, so they are quite interesting to make uh, the gas turbine parts or even under the hood or the other cabin parts from Airbus or maybe other guys. So then they are quite interesting about this technology. And let me uh, talk about the last technology that is direct heat energy deposition. So this is predominantly for the metals, um, uh, but ceramics also possible, but predominantly metal it has started like Optimac. Um, called lens laser engineering net shaping. So um, uh, probably Professor Paul might have given a lot of insights on this technology. Um, say, I just I want to give a glimpse of it, like um, how it will work. It's almost similar to a welding stuff, right? Say you can create an arc uh, and then keep on supplying the a teak uh, kind of a meat kind of a welding. So where you can even supply the powder and high power laser and then it's getting um, say melting and then depositing and kind of a stuff that's what it will work right say and even it can be an electron beam instead of laser the same stuff it will work with the electron beam also so or otherwise the raw material uh, even it can be a kind of a I say you have uh, the electron beam and you can you can have this uh, raw material maybe it can be a rod or it can be you have a lot of material like tantalum titanium so you bring that raw material um, uh, and then you have, yes, so you can have this uh, uh, big size structures. Now in the, in the aerospace industry, like uh, they are looking for to make a fuselages. Can, can you believe that? Uh, so this is a small in that case, if you talk about a large fuselages, people could be able to print them through this kind of, uh, um, I say, a directed energy deposition stuff. And it can be a five axis control need not be a three axis like uh, a typical um, uh, say uh, 3d printing machine normally it will be a three axis control but but the surface finish may not be that much great uh, but it's basically an ear net shape parts which you're going to get but we need to do a lot of post processing stuff so in order to get um, uh, the uh, improve this um, properties so, so which you can see a lot of uh, aerospace guys are looking for that right say just um, to, to this is one of the Siyaki um, technology and similarly you have uh, other stuff like uh, but anyway I don't have much time to discuss but just uh, my idea is to give some overall idea how it can be um, say even it can be used for the repair of uh, the uh, wand out or uh, refurbishment uh, parts so it can be done um, or this is a, a wire arc uh, stuff this is also where nowadays very popular so why are carry to manufacturing uh, it's very similar to the tick as we discussed it's almost an ear net shape uh, um, a shapes maybe for boeing 787 they made this uh, so can you believe that uh, this uh, they are getting fa approvals or fa certification the 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 authorities the flying authorities uh, they are giving uh, approved or certified to to fly um, uh, in, in in the uh, uh, aircraft right so that's that's the developments uh, are happening so um, yeah so yeah siaki which we discussed uh, through that video um, yeah and then cold metal spraying printing that's uh, quite amazing so it can be even 45 kg of material per hour um, than the conventional or the right now the existing maybe around 9 kg per hour but it can be a 45 kg per hour i am talking about not per day so you have such kind of a cold spray metal um, printing stuff so you have a huge um, uh, developments are happening the same thing for the ceramics you can even do um, a ceramic like a composite metal composite uh, kind of a materials or a composite ceramic so you can have iron titanium carbide or a pure ceramic like alumina nickel or uh, tungsten carbide and zirconium cobalt and hydroxyapatite silicon and then titanium I mean, we have a carbon nanotubes so um, this is about uh, the ceramic stuff uh, so to to talk about the benefits and the drawbacks uh, so then uh, you can uh, possibility of you changing the material composition the solidification rates by changing the parameters that's quite interesting um, if you compare with the traditional welding stuff or any 
traditional joining stuff. And then here, directional solidification and single crystal structures. It's a quite uh, uh, amazing to control your uh, grains and grain sizes and uh, uh, say uh, columnar grain stuff, right? So it's a, it's it's a quite um, uh, interesting once you have this kind of technology and repairing and refurbishment as we discussed. Uh, and then composite and heterogeneous materials and depositing of very thin layers, something like uh, uh, CVD or a PVD, right? You can use it this as for uh, coating technique also. You can even deposit very thin layer of, uh, say, dense or a corrosive resistive coating or wear resistive coating on the metals. Um, but the drawbacks may be a limited um, uh, or the poor resolution, so it may be 0.25 mm. Uh, means 250 microns. It's not that much great, right? So if you, um, as built, I am talking about man. maybe post-processing you can improve. And the surface finish as built, it is around 25 microns. So the 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 slow build speeds may be 25 to 40 grams per hour, typically. So that's not that kind of a great speed. Uh, but this is an existing scenario I'm talking about. But you have a lot of developments are happening to, uh, as we discussed previously also, as far as the speed is concerned. And still the accuracy is the major uh, challenge here um, and surface finish too. So then electron beams or uh, with the wire seems to be the leading process in the right now the scenario and then manufacturers are exploring the uh, marketing and their laser deposition heads to add on items and add on machine tools and increasingly being used for the overhang or repair kind of applications and new mill standards just published. So this is some of the recent developments directed energy deposition. So I will uh, quickly rush through the post-processing techniques, um, uh, probably just I can give the glimpse of it. Uh, so maybe for the polymers, you have different stuff and for the metals, you may have different uh, post-processing. Sometimes post-processing may be costing you around 70% of the cost. So that is a, a quite shocking figure, right? Say, yeah, it can be, it can be possible uh, because of uh, different requirements. So then nowadays you have some post-processing machines alone to do post-processing about your metal um, parts uh, um, to get more uh, uh, precise uh, um, improvements of your surface finish or the accuracy through this post-processing techniques and then can the you can even improve uh, the corrosion resistance or the oxidation resistance surface friction and the wear and tensile strength bending strength and cellular and you have a lot of stuff to improve after post during the post processing and during your super finishing technique and you can use the conventional methods normally what you use and you can use all are applicable sanding polishing machining abrasive flow machining uh, chemical etching vapor smoothening Dying, uh, vibratory kind of grinding, short pinning, blasting, electro polishing, electro um, uh, no deposition, spray dip coating. So all that stuff can be uh, done here. So uh, as we said, like it can be um, say 20 micron or maybe um, 40 micron to as built, but you can even go sub micron area value due to this uh, some kind of a dye electro polishing. So techniques like you know uh, some. Um, polishing techniques, super finishing techniques, uh, even it can even go sub micron. As built, it may be a seven micron um, kind of a stuff, but uh, due to the post processing stuff, it can be 0.3 microns. And you can improve a lot of uh, stuff here with maybe by using this uh, um, uh, novel super finishing operations. And as far as density is concerned, like you can make 100% dense. Uh, maybe if you have some micro cracks uh, during the process. Uh, uh, then you can do a heaping that is hot hydrostatic compressing. So then you can at attain 100% dense after post processing. I'm talking about not as built after post processing. You can even it can be. Yeah, and then let me conclude my talk with this slide. So some of the fabrication challenges. So during the talk also we have discussed uh, several challenges that uh, we can face. Um, but though you can. Uh, put it uh, summarize uh, like say standardization of the process is still pending so machine to machine there will be a lot of variability and run to run there will be a, a lot of variability there is no ASTM standards um, you know that's the major issue and consistency lack of consistency in the source material and the process control and the error correction and the post processing requirements it is impacting huge on the cost and the time and the quality so that is another challenge uh, which uh, the, you are facing uh, in this metal printing or the compositor ceramic printing and then certification part it's also the another challenge 
and you may have some kind of health charges issues also um say then especially powder bed systems you work uh, maybe uh, yeah so then integrate in the kind of um, uh, so uh, your digital data how it getting uh, protected so then you may have some blockchain kind of technologies to protect your uh, um, data digital data through the secure uh, uh, blockchain systems to secure your data that's another issue and then uh, challenge and then ips ip protect uh, the kind of stuff so then let me conclude yeah before concluding just i want to give uh, um, some of the facilities that anyway uh, followed by the demo um onto this uh, metal 3d printing printer that we have um uh, at our nit porangal that is uh, a, a, a 3d systems uh, uh, dmp plus uh, metal 3d printer say anyway uh, my scholars is going to give a demo on this machine um uh, say if it can capable of uh, almost all the materials which we, metal and metal alloys but right now we are using four to five materials but it can be tailor made to uh, but we need to uh, uh, develop the process parameters set for that material which you are intended to fabricate that's it so it will come under powder bed whatever we discussed and then and we have other uh, uh, polymer printers also from statasis usa dimension fdm machine and statasis mojo 3d printer and of course nowadays you have a open um, structure like uh, uh, ultimaker um, 2 plus and any scan and sense scan for the scanning uh, and muffle furnace and the short pinning machine for post processing of this uh, metal parts and we have the uh, very good softwares as far as uh, modeling and uh, um, uh, simulations are concerned then we have mimic software for medical applications um, and magics and thematic and catalyst uh, and of course we do have um uh, the uh, 3d expert software for uh, along with this it will come so uh, yeah with this uh, i will conclude actually we are using this facility for mtech additive manufacturing which we started the uh, first time in india of this course uh, in 2014 as uh, uh, the uh, organizer was mentioning in the uh, my introduction part so yeah so nowadays the aict is also looking uh, for uh, kind of uh, minus or the honors degree in uh, 3d printing or additive manufacturing uh, as part of your btech mechanical engineering as a, a major and the minor can be given if you could be able to tune your uh, curriculum to 20 credits uh, towards additive or 3d printing so then if anybody is looking such kind of a sort and we are open Uh, at nit warangal to help you out to frame the syllabus of such kind of a minors which you are looking at so with this i will um, conclude my talk at this point of time so then i will be handing over to the organizers to have some queries uh, yeah it's over to you uh, maya Hello. Yes, yes. That's what I'm looking at. Actually, audio is not coming. My yes, yes, yes. Yes. Hello. Yeah, Mr. Ma. Miss Mayank, audio is not there. Hello. So there is a lot of disturbance, Mayank. Hello. There is a disturbance in the audio.
yeah i think uh, i think he had some problem it seems like you, you can yeah yeah so you can i think you can unmute and uh, i don't know the what is organizing but anyway so you can ask your questions like if you have uh, questions from your sir good afternoon yes good afternoon yeah sir i'm dr pavan uh, from uh, hyderabad master engineering college yeah yeah pavan uh, Sir, basically, I am from a metal science background, mm -hmm. uh, PhD, MSc physics. Sir, okay. uh, sir, I, I just want to know a few things. Uh, I'm I'm happy to say that I worked in NIT Warangal as a faculty for one year there. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, sir, sir, I just want to know a few things, sir. Uh, this technology is really interesting. This is first time uh, I'm no uh, I'm knowing about uh, this technology. Okay. Uh, in this FTP only. Okay. Sir, actually, what is the scope for the R and D in this three uh, D technology for this uh, for our metal science kind of people? Yeah, definitely. As far as metal printing is concerned, then especially the material scientist is the key for you know developing a new material. As far as um, yeah, yeah, then uh, definitely, I am not a material scientist, but definitely, I we need to have a lot of collaboration with the material scientist to. to to develop uh, uh, different uh, material alloys especially for okay. the powder bed system or even the ded system so these are the two uh, technologies where uh, uh, material scientist has to play a, a vital role um, yeah as far as material new materials uh, you can add a lot of materials in this uh, um, uh, space so yeah so material scientist is a major uh, guy to play Role as far as metal and ceramic printing is concerned, polymer okay. I don't think so. There, there will be a huge uh, uh, need from your side, but definitely uh, you we need to have a lot of uh, yeah challenges or we need to collaborate uh, guys like you like uh, uh, yeah. So the material scientist has to especially for developing a new material we we can develop a, uh, a lot of new new materials. So that is the idea okay. to okay. to grow this technology further. Yeah. Mm. Sir, is is this PJT ceramic printable, sir? Um, what is that? P PJT, sir. PJT, piezoelectric material. Yes, PJT. yes, yes. Yeah. Now, now, um, yes, some extent, uh, not uh, the technologies which we discussed here, but uh, definitely, uh, people are looking to print how uh, to print such kind of a piezoelectric uh, stuff also. But it is not that. Uh, a uh, famous or not uh, like okay. other materials but definitely uh, very soon we can see a lot of breakthroughs but lot of research and lo lot of uh, um, say people are putting efforts to print it it's it's uh, very soon it's uh, uh, we can it will come to the commercial level also but okay. lot of r and d is going on in that yeah actually i am working on this magneto electric energy harvesting system sir so okay. where we will use this pjt material and another okay. one is a magneto stick to material Okay. So if we can uh, print this PJT and uh, ferrite, even ferrites also. If we take ferrites, mm. so ferrites are very good for radar absorbing materials. Okay. So if yeah. we can, uh, is there any possibility for that ferrites? Sir, basically those are oxides, no? Sir, nickel ferrite. Uh, okay. So yes. Is it possible to print those kind of materials by any yes. techniques? Yes. Maybe you we we you can look for uh, either a DED. System or the powder bed system, so it it may be uh, yeah quite printable with uh, any one of these technologies. Yes. Okay. Yes, it can. Okay, okay sir. Thank you, sir. So this talk okay. was really interesting, sir. Thank uh, you. Thank first, you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for thank organizing, you. sir. Okay. Am I audible now? Yes. Yeah, sir. yeah, yeah, my young. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, sir, for your uh, such nice presentation. Uh, this is the last call. If uh, anyone can. Uh, Ask the questions, please go uh, ahead. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Sir, uh, can we have uh, any idea about the mechanical strength when compared to the conventional casting process, mm. metal forming process, and the uh, yes. printing process for yes. the same component? Yes, yes, yeah. A uh, very good question, actually. Um, say um, to to answer your question, say. Uh, Uh, I, I as built, it, it cannot be. But after post processing, or even as built also, it can be. Um, literature is saying that it can be. Um, the properties uh, uh, which you are uh, 
um, talking about the mechanical uh, properties. Uh, so it can be uh, on par with the casted part, and it can be uh, a bit um, inferior than the forged component. So definitely, it will go and sit in between casting and forging. So the three D printed uh, um, uh, components, uh, the compon the the uh, properties, the mechanical properties, it will definitely sit in between casting casted part and the forged part. So definitely it will be fitting in that, uh, in between those two. Yeah, I'm sure that, yeah. Sir, uh, regarding this uh, polymer composites, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, you have said uh, about the polymer composites in two processes. One is sheet lamination. Yes. Another is uh, extrusion-based system. Right. Okay, sheet uh, lamination, I got uh, idea. But in right. extrusion-based system, uh, okay. When we are uh, using the polymer composite as a wire, then okay. the melting temperature of the polymer and the matrix material are different. Right. For example, uh, glass fiber or carbon fiber uh, polymers, right. uh, composite if you are using. Then when you are fusing, when we keep it into the nozzle, then right. the polymer will melt uh, faster than the matrix Correct. material. Correct. Then I isn't it that uh, the polymer and the matrix material will deposit differently or separately yeah it's 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 getting printed separately and then you will be maintaining different temperatures uh, of your heads so you have two um, uh, nozzle uh, heads uh, then you will be maintaining uh, different temperatures uh, the uh, of uh, this uh, matrix as well as uh, that uh, composite uh, stuff so it's uh, it's not the same temperature which you are maintaining it um yeah definitely is quite interesting but it's gettable like say uh, uh, if you see the mark forge mark forge is a company which they are commercially uh, doing such kind of uh, stuff yes so then the, the temperatures are maintaining a totally different uh, uh, from this uh, uh, matrix to that yeah material other material yes uh, sir one final question sir okay, okay. Oh. What are the machine that you have shown us previously uh, uh, available at uh, NAD Warangal? Anyway, uh, have the uh, rough cost of it, sir. Cost, approximate cost of the machines you are asking. Yeah. Yes. Then, then all the facilities, whatever you have said. Yes. Then I, you know, you can uh, give a mail. I will, I will send you the reply. Actually. Uh, okay, yeah. Anyway, my scholars uh, right now in the next session will be on that, but they may not be talking about the cost. But to write a mail to me then i will be you no know, uh, yeah replying to that yes okay sir thank you very much sir. Yeah, you can you can establish a very good lab nowadays uh, um, maybe typically polymer printing now it's very cheap now like you can you can buy desktop printers and sla or dlp printers also nowadays a desktop in nature so typically if you spend uh, for polymer uh, setting up a polymer lab with fdm plus sla uh, or DLP technology, so it may be costing you around uh, say uh, around ten lakhs or so. Yeah, you can you can establish a very good uh, uh, polymer printing lab. Why? Because the software is uh, uh, open source software, so you can find a lot of open source software nowadays. So then you do not spend much of the money. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't have any se session on this. Uh, um, um, design part actually you can see a lot of uh, open source software as far as um, um, the fixing the uh, stl file problems or the simulation stuff or the uh, support generation stuff or the topology optimization side or the medical um, uh, processing software you have uh, open source software you can you can give those open source software practice to the students you do not buy no, very costly softwares uh, like uh, which is costing you uh, say 20 lakhs, 30 lakhs per license uh, in case of magics and mimics. That's very costly softwares. But like you can have a very good open source software, but capabilities may be uh, limited, but that may be sufficient for an um, uh, uh, in educational institution or uh, doing an, a bit of R&D. I think it is more than sufficient. Um, to work on those softwares and uh, along with this uh, hardware maybe typically 10 to 15 lakhs if you uh, can but uh, metal you cannot get uh, as of now but definitely if you ask after uh, uh, five years or ten years 
so maybe with that cast even you can you can establish a metal 3d printer also but as of now yeah polymers you can abs or a pla based or epoxy resins and with some open source softwares you can you can yeah yes thank you very much sir thank you so it's my privilege to give you vote of thanks sir uh, you have just discussed uh, different methods and uh, materials for the 3d printing start with the sheet lamination and uh, i have ever seen this type of audio visual ppts uh, it was very nice sir Thank and you. you have covered the challenges and also myth for speed of printing uh, and also post processing techniques and facilities that you are providing in nit varangal so every every participants can take the benefit of it uh, with your permission sir okay sure. so thank you thank you so much sir uh, for uh, giving a nice lecture and attending our uh, session with uh, a request thank, thank you, you sir thank you thank you man thank, thank you sir yeah thank you thank you bye bye so my uh, uh, my scholars will be giving uh, the uh, next uh, demo part okay yeah will, yeah sure yeah. Uh, this will be sir we will start by 245 because uh, okay. there is a 30 right. minute uh, uh, lunch break yes, yeah. Yes, okay. yeah 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 245 yeah 245 sure so we will start uh, yeah. the session by 245 all the participants uh, can leave now and take your lunch we will meet at 245 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Bye bye. Thank yeah. you so much. Bye bye. One. Yeah. Bye bye. One and all. Take care.